Hi there crafty friends, it's Ashley Pfeiffer, the maker behind Stamped AF. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. If you do not yet have a demonstrator, I would be so honoured to earn your business. Uh, you can find everything you need at stampedaf.ca. Uh, we are going to be doing a fun card with a, a bundle from the holiday catalogue. And while we're talking about the holiday catalog, there are some items that have already gone on to the not orderable status. They have been so popular and given that the holiday catalog is only here for another five weeks, my goodness, five plus weeks, um, they Stampin' Up! would not be able to get it back in stock in time. So the festive farmhouse elements, try and get it without a glare, are no longer orderable. I was lucky to order this pack and the first ones that I got early enough. Um, and also the Joyous Noel DSP. It's so sad. This one is, I mean, they're also gorgeous. You can see that coppery foil shine. This one was part of my Stappa Stack and everyone did it and it was just, it was so beautiful. So I have a tiny bit of this left. So. I hope that you were able to order this and get it in time. Um, but if there's anything that you've had your eye on in the holiday catalog and you do not yet have a demonstrator and you live in Canada, please contact me immediately. I have an order going in on November 18th at the latest. Uh, I may have another one going in this week, we'll see. Um, and I may end up with yet one more for the month of November. Um, I have been incredibly busy. This weekend alone, I had my regularly scheduled Saturday class, which was Tags and Tidings, and so cute. So, so cute. We made um, the tags, obviously, and we made the cutest framed piece. And it's not in this room right now, so at the end of the video, I will be sure to show you that, but it was so cute. Um, and then I had a party with my sister-in-law that uh, initially was going to be 13 people. There were 10 that showed, um, and it was such a blast. We made, oops, I've got a box under here. Um, we made these cards, and they're just, they're so cute. So that is Cookie Cutter Christmas with the Festive Farmhouse DSP, and this is from Warm Hearted, the host stamp set. Now this is using the Blended Seasons framelits, which are now retired, but it was just so pretty. They loved it. I'm going in the order which we made these cards. This one was one that my sister-in-law specifically requested, and I think it was one of the favorites of the night. However, I was a dunce and forgot to bring these colors of ink, so they just used gray granite, but super cute. I asked them what their favorite favorites were, and that was by far one of them. The Cable Knit Blended Seasons ranked pretty high, but they did say that as they made each card, the next one was their favorite. This one was nice and simple. This is retired, but still so cute. I'm using the um, Winter Woods birch trees. Um, actually, a couple of people used the other trees in there, the ones that are just tall and branches, and that was super cute, and one even used an evergreen tree. And then this was the last card we made. Now, we did not do the white embossing there, uh, I had them use either Cherry Cobbler or Memento Black Tuxedo ink, and they just turned out fabulous. Now, after I made my sample, I realized I could have used Glimmer Paper for these sprigs, and they did, and they look spectacular. So if you would like to see more about how that class went, you can go onto my Facebook page, Stamped AF, and see more. It was a great time. And if you would like, if you live in the area, obviously, um, if you would like to host a party or learn more about joining Stampin' Up! or anything really, then just contact me and I would be happy to discuss. So without further ado, that was a long introduction, let's get our craft done. So we are going to make two cards, two very different cards. So to start, we are going to use this beautiful, um, can't think of the word, it's, um, I want to say ombre, but I know that's not right. It's like a brocade fabric. There's just such a beautiful 
florally texture to it. You can see I haven't used this yet. And the idea that I'm doing here is one that I saw on Pinterest, so by no means is it am I taking credit for it. Um, all my blocks are soaking from my class last night, so I will use this apparatus for this. And this is going to be a tone-on-tone -tone card. Yes, a tone on tone. So this is Cherry Cobbler. So we will ink it up with Cherry Cobbler. I'm just thinking I'm going to emboss this piece and I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I first thought. So we will get a scrap of cherry cobbler. This will fit on there. We'll just put our magnet at the bottom here. Ink our deer up. Isn't that pretty? So sure, Ashley, but I can't see it. <laughs> okay, now we may ink this up a few times so that it's really tone on tone and we can actually see it. First inking, beautiful. I think we'll do one more. There we go. chamois all ready to go. I ordered a second chamois for my classes and workshops and I just don't have the heart to get it dirty yet. Okay, so that's it for that deer. And actually the other card we're doing will just be a thinlet. And we'll use a sentiment from that. But there are some gorgeous images and sentiments. Love this. So this goes along with the Dashing Deer DSP that was available. That is that graphic there. And because the Joyous Noel paper was so short-lived and abruptly discontinued, they have brought the Dashing Along DSP back. So there's that beautiful thinlets in this pack. Just take this off. Gorgeous little detailed flowers in here and you can see there are three of the solid ones and there are four of the intricate ones. So we'll just tape this guy down. Sorry about the arm there. I've got some little bits of washi tape that are already low tack. So I think we are done with the Stamparatus. I will move that out of the way. I learned an interesting lesson yesterday in my Tags and Tidings class. If you have the Stamparatus and you put it in an Ikea Raskog cart, Make sure you don't have the magnet on the bottom of your Stamparatus because it will not be fun to get it off. Okay, so this is all taped down, ready to go. I might have zoomed in a little bit too much on this video. during the editing process where I'm like, ah, I should have zoomed in. So I will try to remember to zoom back in when we need to. I was a little premature in moving the big shot out of there. Isn't that gorgeous? 
I don't know how well you can see it. I didn't want to turn this light on because I didn't want you getting the glare from the stamp set, but let's zoom you back in. Pretty, isn't it? I love that tone on tone. So we'll tear this part off and keep this for something else. And now we are going to use our tin tile embossing folder. And there's no need to spritz with this one. Try and get it lined up so that you're not right in the middle of a tile. Or if you are, that you're in the middle of a tile on the other side or other end as well. It, that's my preference anyways. So we'll take the thin die adapter plate out as well as the bottom plate. Put this through. Whoa. Back this up again. And this is one of the textured embossing plates folder, so you don't need both of your plates. I don't know what just happened. My phone turned itself off, so hopefully I didn't just lose everything else. Let's do one. Let's do one near this one. There we go. It's blingy. And then on the inside, we shall add a piece of computer paper so that you can read. Well, write on it and then read. So I just cut a piece of printing paper down to four by five and a quarter. And using some cherry cobbler, we are going to put happiest Christmas wishes in cherry cobbler again. The ink is over here. I do not have a block handy. right in the middle of the page. Beautiful. That's it. We'll just take an adhesive runner, part of my reach. Put a little run at the top, a little run at the bottom. that for that card. So like I said, this one was inspired by Pinterest. It's beautiful, rich, tone on tone. Kind of hard to see that deer on the camera, but trust me, it looks beautiful in person. So that was the more difficult of the two cards. The next one we just need some Whisper White. I'm just going to clear out this garbage. So I've really been having some issues this video. My phone has just turned off. Uh, family came home and I paused the video and then wasn't able to come back to it so I'm just picking up um, I've worked on the card obviously since I was filming um, what I did was I have just taken the washi tape from the holiday catalog and I ran out of one of them so I'm using a, a similar pattern it's just red with little polka dots and I have a gap here. I just wanted to show you basically what I did was I cut out my die cut just from a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock 
And what I did was I took this piece and I did a very rough outline in pencil so that I knew where my washi tape had to go to. So I've dug into my big washi tape collection to add one more piece just to fill this gap here. And I thought this was a nice one. Uh, kind of goes with that brocade looking deer. Now there is a lot of gold in here, but maybe what we should try, and I haven't tried this off camera, but to kind of match the other card, let's see if we can color this with our blends and have it stay. Just so that we don't have so much white and gold. Now I don't know if that is going to pool. Tempted to take just a piece of Kleenex and wipe it, but you can see we're not gonna see very much of that. So let's try and kind of blot it and see what happens. Sorry, the aquarium sound is probably uh, annoying. It needs some more water. I am down to one sucker fish. So when that guy goes, the aquarium goes with him. Isn't that terrible? Okay, so I have die cut that and I thought, oh, it could be, stay like that, but I am thinking I would like to emboss it with the subtle embossing folder to give it a subtle look. Just pop that in there. Bring a big shot over. I have my magnetic platform in here right now, and if you're new to the big shot, this is why I'm bringing this in because I feel like I take advantage or I take for granted how much people know about the Big Shot. So if you are new to my channel or if you're new to Stampin' Up, I want to give you kind of a Big Shot 101. So this is the Big Shot platform that comes with the Big Shot. This is the thin die adapter. So as mentioned, it's for thin dies to help it cut. We don't need that for this particular project. So this is one of the dynamic textured embossing folders. So we just need one cutting plate. So we'll put that down and we'll put our one cutting plate, making sure that the embossing folder is on the whole surface and run it through. And you will run into some resistance and that's because it's doing its job. Sorry, there are like a plethora of surfaces that are causing glare right now. So, look at that. As the name suggests, it is subtle, but it will give it just that little something so that it's not white on white and very plain. Isn't that beautiful? We'll add a sentiment. Get all of these things out of here. This side at least. We're going to pop this guy up on dimensionals. And I will do at least one in each corner. If you're new to my channel, you won't know that it drives me bonkers when I put so much work into a card and then it kind of dips down in the middle. So we probably don't need all of these, but what I'm going to do is when you have a sheet of dimensionals, there is zero waste. So you can even use those little pieces and they make a great little support for a longer stretch. And I have umpteen sheets on the go right now because I've had numerous classes. So just pop those down there and we had one little piece here. So you can use every last piece on your dimensionals. This has got one little piece left and it will get used. Now 
nails are a bit too short, you can always use your paper piercing tool, your take a pick tool. And I do sell all of the supplies that I've used in this video. There will be a link to all of the supplies in my description below. But if you live in Canada and you need any of the supplies or any Stampin' Up! supplies for that matter, just reach out and I would be happy to help you with that. With On Stage having been last week, there is, um, there'll be a great demonstrator pre-order coming as of December 5th. So if you would like to get early access to the occasions and celebration catalogs and the products within, then consider joining my team. If you are in Canada, I can only have fellow Canadians buying from me and joining my team. Uh, but as of December 5th, we get access to the items in the catalog. So you can join today and get your starter kit for $135 Canadian, OVS, um, plus one tax, free shipping, and you choose $165 worth of product. There is another great opportunity coming in January, so if you're not quite ready to join, then stay tuned because there are fantastic recruiting options in January with Celebration, and it runs throughout Celebration. But if you have any questions, just give me a message me on any of the platforms that I'm on. You can message me on YouTube. Uh, you can send me an email at stampedaf at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Instagram, Facebook. It's stampedaf across all platforms. So that is all. I thank you for joining me, friends, and we'll see you soon. Bye. So I forgot to mention, with this little die cut, you can use him for another card. We did not do a sentiment. We could do something on the inside, but I think I'm just going to leave it blank. Kind of liking the subtle look to this. And also, I didn't show you this. So this is that framed piece that I was talking about in the introduction. So I used the Tags of Tidings Thinlet with the Glimmer Paper, but I also used the Tags of Tidings Thinlet with the embossing mats, and I got all the little outlines. I don't know if you can see it with that light. Um, you can see just the little faint outline of the tag holes. So I used the embossing mat to give me an idea of where I had to stamp. And I stamped each and every one of these individually, some with the Stamparatus, but I did a number of these, not only for the people attending, but I wanted to have extras just in case. And it was a fantastic project. The coloring was so much fun. And it's just an Ikea frame, albeit it seems kind of backwards because I'm not sure why you would want to have it like that, but whatever. Um, if you see what I mean. I mean, if you hung it like that, it would be upside down. Anyways, it was like a $3 frame and worth every penny and such a fun class. So if you would like to see me make a video on this, then just leave me a comment below and I would be happy to do so. Again, thank you for joining friends. Bye.